Hi, welcome to Armchair Philosophy. I'm Ruben Marshak, and today I'll be asking the question, why isn't there a good argument for God? You're an atheist, and a Christian stands ready to debate you about the existence of his or her God. What do you think they might say? It could be the watchmaker argument, or the ontological argument, or maybe even some Aquinas. Whatever's coming your way, you've probably heard it all before. You're a good atheist, and you've read all the Dawkins and Hitchens. So, nothing really new is coming your way. You've seen every debate with Venom Fang X and the Vigilant Christian. Nothing's going to surprise you. In fact, there have been so few worthwhile attempts to actually rationally explain the existence of God that most of them can be covered in a freshman philosophy course in a single lecture. Or, as one of my teachers put it, if you're looking for a proof of God, sorry, it hasn't happened yet. But just because it hasn't been done doesn't mean it can't be done. There are valid and sound arguments made for ridiculous things in academic journals all the time. So why hasn't it been done? Well, I might have an answer for that. For a good portion of our history, religious and educational institutions were deeply intertwined. In fact, some of the most famous universities today originated as Christian monasteries, Oxford and Cambridge in particular, with Cambridge still having Jesus College today. Employment opportunities for non-Christians and atheists in particular were very limited by the religiosity of these institutions of higher education. The Scottish philosopher David Hume, for example, never really could find steady employment teaching, even though he was a great philosopher, just because he was non-Christian. Hume would not admit to being an atheist, though. In fact, being an atheist was a dangerous view to have for a lot of recorded history. Many nations wouldn't admit atheism at all, and some great thinkers like Socrates were actually put to death for atheism although Socrates actually wasn't an atheist. This resulted in a kind of echo chamber in academic institutions which can still be found in religious schools all over the world today. Simply put, whether it was from fear of death, unemployment, or social ostracization, even the most hardcore atheists throughout history weren't really encouraged to say anything about their point of view. This is very good for state religions like Judaism, Christianity, and Islam because it allowed themselves to be presented as a kind of social elite. With higher education under church control, the more educated people would likely be religious, and the people who stood against the state religion would likely be the uneducated plebeians. But education is changing, and it has been for some time. Religious people today love to complain about the secularization of our schools, but religiosity was a major part of their own education. Today, even many Catholic universities will hire Buddhist or atheist professors, and the religious tenets of Christianity aren't usually a requirement of students to learn in their required classes. Though it may seem like nothing more than the ramblings of crazy old religious people, the secularization of our schools is a matter of historical fact. And who do you have to thank for it? Moritz Schlick and the logical positivists of the Vienna Circle. You may remember the term logical positivism from my first armchair philosophy video, but I didn't talk about the Vienna Circle there. The Vienna Circle was composed of a great number of philosophers and scientists trying to synthesize the fields. They didn't want to make philosophy and science one thing. Philosophy was seen as a valid means of explaining and understanding information gained from empirical sources. Rather, their goal was to make the fields of science, philosophy, and mathematics congruent with each other. They had many big-name members such as Albert Einstein and Bertrand Russell, and from their many meetings and publications, we got things like logical positivism. It was the activity of the Vienna Circle in particular that pushed academic society away from its religious roots. While the logical positivists were doing their best to remove all mysticism from philosophy, they were also teaching, experimenting, and publishing their own writings. And over time, their methods have pushed us towards a more secular mode of education in general. Suddenly, atheism was acceptable. 
Maybe not ideal, but it wouldn't get you killed in most cases. And while there have probably been atheists in every society, atheism as a kind of social movement has only really gained popularity over the last hundred years. Today you can go buy a book by Richard Dawkins or Richard Carrier, depending on your preference, and in most parts of the world you won't get killed for it. But there was a time when you would. Today, you have no fear of judgment. In all fairness, in some parts of the world it still might get you killed. But we've made a lot of progress over time. Let's return to the original question. Why isn't there a good argument for God? It seems that, for the most part, theistic argument in academic institutions have missed their chance. While religious institutions dominated the academic world, there was very little chance for ideological dialogue. The main opponents of Christian academic institutions would probably be other Abrahamic religions, such as Islam, and they have no interest in disproving God. The only other ones were a rapidly disappearing population of pagans. With practically no one pointing out the flaws in their arguments, and counter-arguments being limited by simplistic technology or by religious influence, Judeo-Christian theological philosophy really just stagnated. As philosophers like Friedrich Nietzsche boldly declared that God is dead, just as Christians had done to pagan gods centuries before, institutions like the Vienna Circle were gaining in popularity, well, the Christian philosophers just argued the same points over and over again. The scientific revolution had just ended, and the skeptics and rational thinkers of the Vienna Circle had been practicing their skills for years. Intellectually, a stagnant theistic position stood no chance in a debate. But as academic secularism increases in popularity, as it has done since the Vienna Circle, we might be falling into the same trap that the Christians fell into. In many science departments today, you might even be laughed at for holding any religious views. If the echo chamber effect was the original reason why there isn't a good argument for God, then shouldn't we be concerned about the new echo chambers that we're creating today? In modern academic settings, the Christian is usually discouraged from formulating arguments in favor of their faith at all. And among academics, making religious statements of any kind could be considered a really bad career move. In essence, the academic Christian today finds themselves in a similar situation to what the atheists were going through in the Middle Ages, without, of course, the threat of death. It may be the case that rational theism is impossible now within our current academic setting. We should take care not to copy their mistakes ourselves and become stagnant. YouTube has served as a podium for religious debate for many years. In modern times, anyone with an internet connection and a camera can make their case, rational or otherwise. This has shed some light on the limitations of religious institutions and their defenses for God. In almost every case, Christians fail to convince atheists online due to their simplistic or outdated arguments. Presuppositionalism and arguments from scripture are even becoming common debate tactics for Christians. And in some cases, science is literally denied in order to make a religion seem better. Even though I don't believe in evolution, therefore Christianity is true, isn't a valid statement. In other cases, such as in modern Islamic apologetics, appeals to emotion and other logical fallacies are extremely common. In fact, in terms of religious philosophy, modern Islam might be the most lacking due to their cultural rejection of anything irreligious. Now that academic institutions are becoming more secular, websites like YouTube or Blog Talk Radio might be the best means of developing the philosophy of religion. And maybe someday a good argument for the existence of God will pop up in your newsfeed. But I'm willing to bet it hasn't happened yet. That's all for this time on Armchair Philosophy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, donate to us on Patreon, buy our t-shirts, worship us, etc., etc. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye